Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Dan, Warpaint JKU. If you want to know what the absolute best, strongest, most reliable steering setup in your Jeep is going to be, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video. Hydraulic assist rams, they're awesome, right? Guys, now, before we get too far into this, I just want to clear some things up, right? You guys, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have war paint out there with a Super Duty Dana 60 under it and 40-inch tires. You also know about our Leaf Spring JKU Project Jeep here that also has the same axle and the same tire size. But have no fear. <laughs> because you don't need to have a one ton axle or 40 inch tires to reap the benefits of hydraulic assist steering. But what exactly is hydraulic assist steering? Well, let's dive on underneath war paint. Let me explain. War paint steering has a tie rod, right? Connecting the passenger and driver side tire. It basically goes parallel to your axle, just like every other solid front axle vehicle. And it also has a drag link, just like every other Jeep. But if you look closely behind that tie rod connected to it is going to be something that kind of looks like a steering stabilizer, but it isn't. Let's get over a quick myth real fast here with steering stabilizers and how a lot of people think that if you have death wobble or a shimmy in your steering wheel, you need a new one. Um, a lot of the time replacing it will fix those issues, but it doesn't actually fix them. It just makes them feel better until the steering stabilizer wears out and then you have the same problems all over again. None of this is a replacement for worn front end suspension components, uneven tire wear, bearings, things like that. So if your front end is in tip top shape and you want a little bit more power off road, a hydraulic assist from West Texas off road is going to be exactly what you're looking for. Now, the major difference between a hydraulic assist ram and a steering stabilizer when you're just looking at it is going to be the fact that the hydraulic assist ram has lines feeding hydraulic fluid to it they both kind of look like a shock uh, and that's exactly what a steering stabilizer basically is it just absorbs a little bit of that vibration off the road now a hydraulic assist ram actually controls your front wheels if it was ever to fail and you were to blow a line, you still would have a manual connection with your drag link to your steering wheel. and You would still be able to steer your Jeep, which is why in most places they are street legal and you don't have to worry about it. Full hydro, it's a whole nother ball game. We're not going to get into that during this video. But really quickly, I mentioned West Texas off-road before and I want you guys to understand why. West Texas Off-Road makes hydraulic assist rams. They also rebuild steering boxes and then they tap them so that you can connect those lines we talked about a minute ago to actually get the hydraulic fluid to your steering system. And there's a big misconception and I want to handle it in this video. Your factory steering box in a Jeep is plenty strong. It's plenty strong to turn the front end with stock tires or even a slightly larger tire. We're not talking anything too enormous. Now, cue all the guys saying they have 37s or 40s and it works just fine. I'm organizing a mob of people with pitchforks and torches. It always will until it doesn't because you are stressing it out. It was never meant to turn that big of a tire. In comes West Texas Off-Road. Now those guys are awesome because they make a very high quality product that I have ran on war paint. I have buddies that have ran them on their Jeeps and we're gonna absolutely put them on all of our project vehicles in the future because they charge the right price for it, okay? It's significantly cheaper than a lot of the others that are out there on the market, but it's not because it's any less quality. I have put mine through its paces, pushed boulders out of the way on trails, just relying on my steering, and it absolutely has been amazing. There also is a great customer service level with West Texas Off-Road. Those guys, if you call them, they will spend time talking to you on the phone. They'll talk you through the setup. They'll talk you through how to measure. They will talk to you about issues, and they'll get you the parts that you need and the replacement stuff. 
Try that with those bigger companies. But back to our current axle and how to measure for a hydraulic ram. Now you're gonna need a few things. And this axle again may look a little bit different than your axle, but again, like I said before, that's okay because any straight solid front axle that's gonna be on your Jeep, this will work. Now you're gonna need some type of a floor jack to jack up the front of the vehicle and set the axle on jack stands. I like to use these from American Lifting Off-Road because they're super tall and when you're on 40 inch tires with big axles and stuff, your, your vehicle is pretty high off the ground. They work really well, they're super safe. But once you have safe jack stands, you're gonna want something that is a straight edge and you're gonna want one that's long enough to actually go from your axle out over the tie rod, okay? So you're gonna want one that's decently long. Um, you're also gonna need some painter's tape, maybe a Sharpie so that you can mark it, and certainly a pad to write down your numbers, right? You're also gonna wanna make sure that you're doing this on a Jeep that has a good alignment. That's like a question mark. You're gonna wanna make sure that your steering wheel is centered. You're gonna wanna make sure your tires are pointing forward while your steering wheel is centered. But if all that is the case, you're gonna wanna jack up your axle, set it on those jack stands, and then get working. Now guys, there's a couple schools of thought on how to actually measure for a ram. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it, but I'm also gonna tell you the way that West Texas Off-Road would prefer that you do it. They prefer, especially on a stock vehicle, that you actually take your wheels and tires and turn them all the way to one side until the steering stop actually contacts the knuckle and it can't go any farther. That way you still get full turning radius and the steering stops act as the actual stop, right? The ram kind of matches your full turning radius. Which sounds amazing, right? Why would you ever do it any differently? Well, let's hop under the Jeep and I'm gonna explain why. So on this particular Jeep, obviously we have a front axle under here that was never designed to go underneath a Jeep. So the turning radius doesn't necessarily match the factory Jeep's steering box, okay? If I was to basically take these wheels and turn them all the way to the steering stop, it would be farther than the steering box would allow it to go, right? Your steering wheel only turns so far before it hits like a, a lock in the steering box. So if I was to make a ram that was capable of doing it that way, it would actually wanna push past where the steering box allows it to go and it would damage it because the ram provides a lot of extra strength. Now you could drill and tap those, put a bolt in it and adjust it for your steering stops. But what I do on these custom axles with custom drag links and custom weld on high steer arms and custom tie rods is I basically turn the wheels, okay? And I use the fender, which I'll show you in a second, to basically match the steering angle on both sides. Once that steering angle is matched on both sides and the tie rod is marked, I measure, and the ram winds up actually being the limiting factor on my steering. Now that's not the best situation for long-term uses unless you drive it and are aware of it because as you turn all the way to one side, that ram will either be fully extended or fully contracted and your steering box will actually be able to put maybe a little bit more pressure on that ram than it wants it to have and you'll blow the seals out on the ends of that ram pretty quickly. So you have to be aware of it if you're gonna do it this way. What I do is I get to the end of the ram and then I back off my steering just a tad to remove that pressure. It's always done me perfectly fine. But let's get to measuring. With my wheels pointed perfectly center and forward, the steering wheel is centered. I know my alignment is good. I take my straight edge, put it in position on the axle where I like it, line it up. And of course, you can tell I've already done this. I line it up and then I mark my tie rod. I label that mark with a C to show that that's the center mark. Now I'm gonna take the wheel, I'm gonna turn it all the way to one side, put, the, put my straight edge back in the exact same spot and mark it again. But once again, the custom axle situation, right? My tire is contacting the leaf spring and contacting the leaf spring. That is not something that we want our Ram to do. It will destroy your tires very, very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is basically stand on this front edge of the tire, right? I'm gonna put my body up against it 
And then I'm gonna look at this corner of my fender. Knowing that both my fenders are straight, this vehicle's never been in an accident, and I'm gonna turn it back a little bit, right? So that it's basically in line with the center of the tire. That won't make it turn as well as it maybe could, but it'll still turn pretty well, okay? And it backs it off the leaf spring enough to where we won't have any issues. Now, I'm gonna take my straight edge, I'm gonna mark that tie rod again, just the way I did before, and then I'm gonna turn it the other way and do it the same. And once again, to the driver's side, there's our line. Now guys, if we come back over here and we look, right, same steering angle, corner of that tire, right on the, or corner of that fender, right on the center of the tire. So we have the same steering left and right. And when we come over here, we're gonna measure between this far line on this side, across the center mark to the far line on the other side. And if you have equal steering to both sides, that center point should be very close, maybe not perfect, but very close to the center. Our distance between these two lines happens to be just about nine inches. So we're gonna order a nine inch ram to make the front of this vehicle move the way it should out on the trail when it's aired down. Guys, that's all there is to it when it comes to measuring for a ram. You can overthink it, make it very, very complicated, but you don't have to, right? That ram is gonna connect to your tie rod like I showed you earlier on Warpaint, and it works really, really well. It provides a lot of torque and pressure because remember guys, the ram does all the work in steering. So it basically takes all the pressure off of your factory steering box when you're turning really big tires aired down off-road with a lot of grip. And it allows you to basically, in a lot of cases, not always, but in a lot of cases, just use a finger or two to turn that steering wheel and get that Jeep to actually respond without putting all the pressure on that sector shaft. Now, sometimes those sector shafts will break off if you put a larger tire on your vehicle and wind up using your regular factory steering box in order to turn it. But again, this is the fix, right? Uh, this will take all the pressure off of that sector shaft off-road. It will give you that pressure when it's bound up off-road between the rocks and you'll be able to turn your rig just fine. I hope you give West Texas Off-Road a call and get the Redneck Ram on your rig because like I said, I have tested it on Warpaint through and through. I have buddies that have tested them on their rigs through and through, and they're great. And if you ever need replacement parts, they're definitely there for you and ready to support you. So measure your RAM, get it going. Again, if you do it the way I did it in this video, just be cognizant of putting too much pressure on it at full lock. You don't want to blow the seals in the end of it. And uh, guys, you'll have all the steering that you need to turn these big heavy tires off-road when it's bound up. But anyway, guys, get out there and build something.